In today's video, I'm going to step through the process of setting up an emissive material. In particular, we're going to start out with a very simple material. Uh, we will then add in a time-based element in which it will fade between a low value and a high value. And then we'll take it a step further in which we'll add a bitmap mask and world space coordinates to give variation across your entire scene. So let's get started. So rather than jumping in at the start and setting up the world space material, I want to step back a little bit and go through the basics to show you how we get to the world space material. So to get started, let's just take a look at a very simple uh, emissive material that's set up. So I have a parameter. Um, if you've seen in previous videos, I'm a big fan of master materials. And so all of these have been set up. We've got two parameters, one of which is the color and the other is an intensity. So color to base color, and then a multiply with our intensity. And if we were to I'll actually create a material instance of this real quick and open this guy, there's our two controls. So we can set the color and we can also set the intensity. Nothing fancy there, um, but that's a basic, uh, basic emissive. Now, if we were to apply it, everything would be glowing all the time. There's no variation on it. So that's the first process um, with setting up something simple. Now for our second material, we're going to take what we set up in the basic material just a step further in that uh, we're now going to add a time-based element to it to fade in and out of a low value and a high value. So it gives kind of the appearance of this strobing um, LED light. So to do that, you can see that we've got the same uh, essentially the same basic setup that we have a, a color parameter control our base um, and then we've also got um, uh, an intensity that gets multiplied so color goes down here uh, and then it's multiplied by uh, whatever we want to get this variation now to, to set this up we're going to do a couple things here now we want to fade between a high value and a low value so we can control that how bright do we want it to get how low do we want it to get um, so to do that we'll simply drag off of the color and we'll create a multiply node, do a high intensity and a low intensity, and we will lerp those together. Now with the lerp, um, what will control that is our alpha. So to do a time-based setup, uh, it's very simple. We just create a time node, multiply it by a sign period. I'll show you guys how this, uh, how, how this works. Um, plug it into a sign node, into a power so we can control the intensity of it, um, and then plug it into our alpha. The final step that I did in this material was to set up just another multiply with a global intensity. So say you've got your spectrum, it's too bright in your scene, you can just globally ramp it up or down. So let's take a look real quick at um, one of these. We'll open up the, the red one. So this is just an instance of the master material that I set here, this uh, MLED time. So that's what we're going to be looking at right here. And I will show you. So first thing, obviously coming out of our color, we can control that LED color here. And then it goes into our multiply and another multiply with our high and low values. So if we come up to here, let's say we change our high to six. Very, very subtle. Let's take it to 10. You can see it just barely fades in and out. Again, lurping between based on this time. I'll go ahead and reset this. Global intensity, so I can take it in half. I can take it down to a 10th. Again, that's a multiply over the top thing. And then our uh, sign fade, so we can take this down to 0.1. So it's a much harsher uh, fade. We can take it up to two, and you can see it's a real slow we'll go three, take it down to 0.5. And then our sign period, so we take this to like 10. You can see you kind of get that strobe effect. If we take it down to 0.1, very slow. So that's the basic setup with just a time-based one using this. Now I'll show you what this looks like in our scene. So if I if I take this object that we have set up, um, just kind of a CPU rack, and I, I will replace these with um, a blue one to show you this. So all I've done is just change the colors. Everything is still basic. And then of course we just saw the red. So I will take the red into here and the blue into here, and I'll show you what happens. So it's a cool effect, it's neat, but if you notice that it's it's very uniform across the whole level. Everything is strobing at the same time. Um, this could be an effect that you want to go for, um, 
But in this case, since we're kind of going for this like futuristic, maybe, you know, like what could be a server room or something like that, uh, it probably doesn't work because everything probably isn't going to be strobing in the same effect. But that's just to show you what setting up a time-based one, what it will do. So it could be good in some situations um, and others not. Okay, so we're gonna take this a step further and now we're going to add a world space element. Um, and if you aren't familiar with what world space is, um, it's coordinates that exist within your scene as opposed to UV space. So without going too deep into it, um, the simplest way to, to think about it is that your, your texture is kind of, um, all your objects are swimming in this pool of your textures as opposed to the UV space. Um, it'll probably make a little bit more sense as we set up the material. Um, but let's just dive right in real quick and take a look at at this one. So the setup is very similar to what we had with the time base. We have a color node. It comes out to two multiplies for our low intensity or high intensity. It gets lerped together. Now we'll go over this in a second. And then of course we have our multiply over the global. So nothing different there. Now what we do have different is what's controlling this lerps alpha. Um, whereas before we were using a time based element, we're now going to use world position. So very, very basic setup that you can use here. Um, you'll do an absolute world position, which I believe if you right click and type in world coordinates, world position, it'll pop up your absolute world position. That's what you want to use. We're going to mask out the RNG channels. Um, we'll divide it. So in this case, we want a U parameter and a V parameter. We'll append those and change those together and we'll take it into a panner. Now, why do we want to do that? Um, as opposed to just take an absolute world position and multiply it by something. Uh, the reason for that is because of this node right here. Um, what we're doing with this material setup is we're using a bitmap texture. So black will be where um, your, uh, your, your, your values don't show and white will be where they do show. So if you, again, if you remember, we're coming out to this alpha. So where it's black, it's going to be our low intensity. Where it's white, it's going to be our high intensity. Um, and that's what's going to fade between it. Um, so that gives us um, infinite more variations on how we control. We can do a strobe effect. We can do um, a very, very uh, rhythmic pattern. And we can do something that's just very uh, random and generic. So this whole setup of splitting out the RNG channels um, is to pan it in U and V. So we can have different controls over how quickly our bitmap is going this way and how quickly our bitmap is going this way. Uh, if that makes sense, it, you, you'll probably see it in, in the level, but um, all that is set up to be able to pan this texture in a direction and give it um, give it that variation. And then, of course, last thing is this uh, kind of power node that we put in there with a parameter, and that is simply just to control the uh, more or less the contrast. So how white the whites are, how black the blacks are in case we need to increase effectively the contrast um, and that's what controls our lerp so we'll go back to our cpu rack that we have here kind of our futuristic one and i'm going to replace it with um again using this uh actually we'll close that guy out you using our our world space one i've created just two instances off of that so i'll replug in the green and i'll plug in the blue so immediately you can see that we're already getting a lot more variation here. Um, so if I open up, say for example, I'll, I'll take the blue one since that one's coming across. And I'm going to ramp up the, the intensity, let's say to 500. So there you can see you've got a lot more variation in there uh, using the same exact material, but it looks like each one of these. Now we've got some more in the scene here. Maybe a little difficult to see, uh, but all of them appear to be randomly flashing. Uh, which is a really cool effect um, using again just one material. We don't have to go and change it per uh, per each instance um, And then I'll show you here as well. So now that we have these UV coordinates uh, Exposed that's how fast this texture is gonna uh, basically pan across. So if I set these to zero Really not gonna do much um, and the primary reason for that is that our, our, our panning um, isn't isn't really moving uh, hardly at all. So if I set this up, say, you know, we'll go 500. Let's go 500. It's effectively moving this texture um, in that direction. So again, where, where you have your black values of your texture, 
Um, that's where you're going to have your low values. In this case, we have five. And then where you have white is going to be uh, our high values, uh, which in this case is 500. Let's take this just a little step further and I'll show you uh, a variation and how you can control the, uh, the pattern of your emissive light. So we're using this kind of just randomly generated noise, uh, a cloud pattern, but why don't we change it out to this particular pattern uh, and just see what happens to it. So I'll go ahead and drop this in here with our blue lights and immediately can see a big difference in change. Now, if you watch the lights, you'll see that it does correspond with the texture, right? We've got kind of a pulsing of two kind of beats and then there's this pause and then three short bursts and then a fade up and a fade down, which is exactly what's happening with our texture. We've got one, two, and a long pause, one, two, long pause, and then it fades up and it fades down. So this is just a, another fun way that you can control the variations on it um, using this kind of master emissive and world space coordinates. Uh, so hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. Again, thanks for watching.